I'm here today with Mark Adams, CEO of Attract Group, to discuss the interim results and the acquisition of a left search. Mark, why did you take the role as CEO and what have your initial observations been since joining? I took the role as CEO um, and, and joined back in June, basically because it was a, a unique opportunity for me personally to join a company as CEO, an established technology company that had a significant market opportunity and a growth opportunity, uh, but also to lead a company that is public was you know, personally interesting to me. What I've seen since joining, actually, is Attract has an awesome team of people, uh, a committed team of people, and we have customers that are you know, market leading in their industries as well. Uh, so a great customer base. And when you combine great technology with great people and great customers and a lot of ambition, then there is a real opportunity there. And it's super exciting to be joining at this time when these opportunities sit in front of us. Right now, if you look at what's going on in our industry, retail is in a lot of transformation. It's in a transformation around investing in digital technologies that are driving online sales growth, and they're trying to work out how they capitalize on that opportunity in a changing and highly competitive market that have been disrupted by pure play online retailers, the likes of Amazon and marketplaces and the such. And so our customers are requiring the best possible tools and technology to compete in that environment. Uh, And I think Attract has the right strategy and the right products to help our customers grow at a particularly challenging time more generally, but to take advantage of the opportunity of digital transformation. Could you provide an overview of your results for the half? So I would describe our financial performance through the first half of 2020 as exceptionally resilient. We've increased our revenues by 13% to 10.2 million. This has been driven through a couple of things. It's been driven by an exceptional performance in our multi-year renewals. So that is existing customers that are re-signing for longer periods to us. We've signed 27 of those in the period, and that's up from 11 in 2019. Uh, So there's a real significant movement and improvement in our ability to re-sign those existing customers. And that is the effect of investment in our customer success organization, but also in product innovation and bringing new products to market uh, that those customers can use to drive incremental revenue in their businesses. We signed 13 new logos. And again, this is a significant improvement over the same period last year where we signed five. And we're doing that through multiple geographies, both then in uh, Australia, in Spain, in the Netherlands, for example, of course, in the UK, but also in France. What I would say about our new logo performance is it, it was impacted through the pandemic. So as the pandemic hit towards the end of Q1, decisions within our pipeline were either deferred or delayed. Of course, these retailers and brands were furloughing people. They were closing stores, closing warehouses. And so you know, big decisions around technology change got put on hold. Interestingly, we didn't see the pipeline blow out, but just deferred. And from the end of Q2, many of those opportunities came back and were closed. And that's continued actually through into Q3, where we've had a really strong performance in new business. Overall, our net revenue retention rate now stands at 98%, which again is an improvement on the same period last year, where we were at 95%. Still not where I'd like it to be. I think there's an opportunity for us to drive that beyond 100% this year. And as we go into 21, to really move the needle on improving our net revenue retention. Our net promoter score also stands at 34, which is industry leading uh, amongst our peers. I'd like to continue driving that forward above 40 for next year. But again, these are all signs that our existing customers like our products, they like our people, and they're committing to us for longer terms, which is a great thing for our continued strong financial performance. And what's been happening in the market? The pandemic has brought both threat and opportunity to retailers and brands, to our customer base, but also to software companies operating in our space and to attract. What we have seen actually is an acceleration of online sales through the pandemic and a rapid acceleration. So we've gone from e-commerce sales being 17% of overall retail sales pre-COVID to now operating at something like 30%. And what that means is we've had five years of growth in online sales as a proportion of overall retail sales in just two quarters. Forrester, the analyst, are actually saying that by 2024 now, we could see 50% 
of all retail sales being online, which again means that digital adoption and online sales growth and e-commerce is a much more important part of a retailer's and a brand's overall revenue, which means technologies like Attract are going to be more and more important to those customers. You've announced the acquisition of Aleph. What will the acquisition bring to Attract? The acquisition of a left search technology will bring significantly improved capabilities and results from searches. So over the last few years, there's been a significant improvement driven by Google, actually. If you type in a search term into Google, you get back highly relevant results. And that's because Google switched to using AI-based semantic search technology four or five years ago. And the consumer now expects the same kind of experience they get on Google when they go to an e-commerce shopping website. And so the LF search capability will give us a Google-like shopping experience for e-commerce, but also will underpin our investment and continued roadmap around machine learning, bringing artificial intelligence into our platform and effectively accelerating our roadmap by around about two years, giving us market competitive search technology that is driven by algorithms and automation, meaning our customers can improve the search results, drive more revenue through better conversions, and ultimately more top-line revenue through the web channels. What is most interesting about the acquisition, actually, is that we've proven this within our existing base. We had a reseller agreement in place with LF Search, and we've had that in place for six months. And we've been deploying the technology into attract existing customers. We've had proof of concepts running with a number of them, and we've seen the results of the deployment of this technology, which have shown increased conversion rates on search results, increased conversion rates on revenue as well. And actually, we've seen an additional 3 to 10 million annualized turnover per retailer through the deployment of this technology. So not only we've proven it out pre-acquisition, we're confident that this will have a greater impact on other existing customers, as well as our ability to close and win new business in a competitive market. So what should investors expect going forward? I think investors can expect that Attracts continue with its resilient performance. I'm expecting half two to be stronger than the first half, particularly from a new business perspective. We're seeing those decisions come back now. Q3 actually has been very strong in terms of our new business performance. We've exceeded management's expectations. We've also exceeded expectations in strategic upselling of new products to our existing base and on those multi-year renewals as well. So overall, I think the outlook is good for half two. I'm hoping and expecting that we will deliver a strong performance and meet our ARR exit targets that we originally set at the beginning of the year. So we close that gap on that slight first half miss. But, you know, broadly speaking, the longer term bodes exceptionally well for us. We're in a growing market. We're in a changing market. uh, We're innovating quickly. And ultimately, online sales as a proportion of total retail sales is becoming uh, bigger and bigger. And that means investments into digital technology by retailers and brands is going to increase. And we can only be a, a beneficiary of that.